call the meeting for September 11th, 2018 to order. Uh, we'll start with the invocation and a pledge of allegiance uh, that will be led by Roger on the pledge. And uh, if everybody could please stand. And we'll Heavenly Father, as we start this meeting, we, uh, we remember today is September 11th and we remember the terrorist attack on New York City. And we, uh, we ask that they still keep the survivors and, and the, the families of the, those who passed away in that um, in your hand here, Lord. Uh, we ask a blessing on our meeting tonight. Give us the wisdom to make good recommendations for our city council. We ask for a uh, blessing on all of our staff. We thank them for the job that they do to, to prepare us for this meeting. We ask a blessing on all of our uh, first responders. Keep them safe as they go around keeping us safe, especially now as the hurricane season comes upon us. Uh, have everybody prepared to keep our, keep our city safe as we go through the, the hurricane season. We ask a special blessing on our military, Lord, wherever they are in the world, keep them safe and bring them home there. We ask all of this in your name. Amen. So on this anniversary, we, re we reaffirm our, our uh, pride and sovereignty in the United States by pledging allegiance to its flag. I pledge allegiance. <laughs> see if we have a quorum. Chair Keller. Oh. Chairman Keller. Here. No. Vice Chair Williams. Here. Member Millen. Here. Member Wunderlich. Here. Member Bernstein. Here. We have a quorum. All right, thank you. Uh, consent agenda, we'll now take up the consent agenda for the August 14th meeting. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? Is there a second? I second. All right, we have a motion by Member Wunderlich, a uh, second by Vice Chair Williams. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Okay, old business, we have none. So that moves us into the new business, and I'd like to introduce for our first uh, piece of uh, business, the Innovation Montessori and Planner Jones. So Planner Jones, we'll turn it over to you. Record on Dwayne Jones, Plano One, for the City of Lacroix. And this project I have for you this evening is called Innovation Montessori Annexation and Rezoning. Um, the project number is AX071874 and RZ180711. This property is seeking um, annexation and rezoning for the future expansion of Innovation Monastery School, which is located to the south of this property. This property was annexed and built um, last year, so they, did, they have plans on adding on to the um, existing school. The property is located at 2336 Fullers Cross Road. It is on the south side of Fullers Cross and it's at 870 feet west of the intersection of Fuller's Cross and North Lakewood Avenue. The property lot size is 2.59 acres with an existing single family home, which is right there. I kind of can see it up there. The existing zoning is currently Orange County A1 single family. Um, the city is requesting a rezoning change to A1 um, private school. And the future land use of this property is low density residential, and the future land use complies with the A1 zoning. The proposed site plan um, will require city potable water and sewer upon construction. Um, at this time, there are no plan, there are no approved site plan um, submitted to us. Um, so we don't have a timetable of when it will start. Um, however, once we receive one, we'll have a better idea of when um, construction will begin. Uh, we also have an uh, engineer for Innovation Monastery School here as well, if you have any questions or concerns for him. So at this time, 
Uh, yeah, uh, but then before we ask the applicant to come up, is there any questions from the, for Planner Jones? Yeah, I got one. Um, why agricultural for the, the zoning instead of um, single family that's around that area? Single family, it wouldn't be a home. It's actually the property south of it where the new school is located is actually A1 as well. But we wouldn't necessarily have to change the zoning to R1 zoning because it's not a um, single family type of use, it's a school. So we can keep it A1 and still maintain a school um, type of use. And as you look at the tables right there, let me just go back to the zoning. Right here. So as you see from the tables, single family uses are in yellow. So we wouldn't want to put that in a single family type of use. We want to keep it A1. It wouldn't be a commercial use, um, or it wouldn't be any type of the, uh, mobile home or any of the professional offices. So ideally, keeping it at A1 um, you know, wouldn't change anything. Right, but the lot to the left of it and right in front of it are homes right now. Right. Not businesses or schools. Right. It's the same way as the property, the properties where the existing school is located, which I probably can't really see it from this area because I zoomed in too much. But, but by, by having the school next to a residential property wouldn't affect anything. It, it, it might affect the traffic um, um, coming from and in of the um, Fuller's Cross in Lakewood. Uh, we don't have a traffic study analysis on that property as of yet, but we do plan on getting some type of research done. Um, but by changing it to that type of use, it wouldn't affect anything. And also as my, uh, Mike Krugman, city planner. The uh, existing, the, the surrounding zonings of the properties are, are Orange County agriculture. The existing Lake Sorry Montessori site has an agricultural zoning. And the reason we gave that at the time of annexation for the school was a, a school is a special exception in a residential zoning district. But we knew the size of the Montessori school and as an inducement to help them get in to speed up the process instead of going through a special section process, which is a public hearing before the Planning Zoning Commission and the City Commission, and then coming back through with the site plan with the public hearing for the planning and zoning, we, we eliminated that special exception process knowing that we had a public hearing process for the site plan for the school. So we gave it the A1 zoning, which a school is an outright use. This property is gonna be tied to that um, <coughs> existing school site at a later date. So it didn't make sense to give it a residential zoning, which would require a special exception for a school that's mostly located on another parcel. So that's, that's the reason for the agricultural zoning. Uh, is it, or would it be correctly categorized as regular order for a parcel to be zoned agriculture for a school, is it, or is this unusual? No, the school board typically zones their, pro their school's properties as agriculture. Thank you. I just remember uh, earlier this year there was a preschool that came before us that was part of the national chain, and I don't recall that being... Uh, well, there's a difference between preschool in a school, a charter school is considered a public school. A daycare nursery is something different. Thank you. That's not. It's not. So this considered is more school. than just a preschool. Yes, I'm this sorry, is I've, quasi. I have experience. This I is quasi know. public school, and it's run some, and it's run by a not profit, not for profit. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I had only known of Montessori yeah. as a preschool back okay. in the 1960s. I'm a little bit surprised by that. Thank you. Additional questions? Okay. Hearing none, um, the applicant, if you have any, uh, if you'd like to add anything, come on up, introduce yourself uh, with your name and your address. Good evening, Bob Ziggin, FUS Z Development Services, 708 East Colonial Drive in Orlando, Florida. I'm here representing the contract purchaser for the property um, and here to answer any questions you have, but yes, this is for the future expansion. Uh, the, it's, it's grades, 
through uh, at least elementary school, I do know. Um, so it's, it's much more than just a, a kindergarten type facility. They do have everything from pre-kindergarten up through grade six. Um, so this will be further expansion. We don't have any plans in the works yet. We've been going back and forth with them about several different ideas. I can tell you that <clears throat> it will be a, an expansion in student capacity in the future. Um, more than likely those plans will be coming before this board sometime next year. Um, and it will also be additional uh, car stacking uh, for morning drop off and afternoon pickup and some additional parking facilities as well. So I'm here to answer any other questions that you may have this evening. When it opened, what do you anticipate the student census to be? Uh, that is not known at this time. They're still making the decisions on what the, the total expansion is going to be. Do you know what the census is right now? Uh, currently, they're in the mid-700s as far as student count. On two and a half acres? Uh, the existing site, no, this, this is an expansion site that we're talking about here. Thank the you. existing site is larger than that. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, any additional questions? Well, I guess it relates to the, you know traffic. I know that you said that the traffic study hasn't been done yet. I would imagine if you're going to plop 700 students in there, the existing roads around that area are not even remotely able to. Yeah, we the, the traffic study will be conducted. We've already got a traffic uh, engineer on board and has begun do doing some of those studies. But final decisions have to be made on the planning, what the student capacity is going to be. Um, in order to finalize the study, we've begun Fuller's Cross and Lakewood are both Orange County public roadways. Uh, so we'll be permitting all this work, not only through the city, it will have foresight here in the review of the city's traffic engineer. It's also gonna have review of all the Orange County traffic engineers as well. So it's gonna be going through two different entities to make sure that all of that's looked at properly. Yeah, and the, the original approval for the Montessori school, K through eight, the number escapes me, the maximum number, I wanna say, 750 uh, students that did have a traffic study that only accessed Lakewood. This new property does provide an access point to Fuller's Cross, so they will have to not only update the traffic study because of the increase in students, but they also have another relief valve. But the initial traffic study for the existing site on Lakewood, um, they did provide a traffic study. It was reviewed by consultants. It also had to be approved by Orange County, so if you go out there, you will see a, a left turn lane that is as long as it can be to meet the Orange County criteria. So there will be an update depending on what um, expansion they have in the number of students will require an update to that existing traffic study. Do you anticipate that the four-year-old preschool children will have uh, an opportunity to be in the state-funded VPK program? I'm sorry, I don't know the answer uh, to that. Uh, you know, that's, the, I'm sure that's the Montessori's program and that's a way to receive funding. They do receive funding just as every other public school does based Very off good. of, and there may have been, I don't wanna stretch, but I don't know about maintenance, but they do receive that state funding. It's just that VPK is a great outreach to uh, a wide range of communities, an economic yes. range, and that is a, a great benefit. Uh, my philosophy is when I can annex a parcel and get it out of Orange County's hands, I bring it in as soon as possible. <laughs> we'll worry about, in the case, this case, we don't have the details. We thought we would have details and it wouldn't be in at this planning and zoning commission or they would have submitted a, a concept plan, but uh, things change and so I just want to get it out of Orange County's hands. Check. Mm -hmm. Additional questions? Hearing none, what we'll do is this is a public hearing, so we're going to turn this, going to open the public hearing and ask if there's anybody in the, <coughs> excuse me, in the audience that wants to speak. Seeing none, we're going to close the public hearing and bring it back uh, to the dais. We do need two motions for this. We need one motion for the annexation, and then we need another uh, motion for the rezoning. So uh, I will entertain a motion for the. Um, Annexation first. So Mr. Chairman, I'll uh, move the, the Planning and Zoning Commission acting as the local planning agency recommend approval of the annexation of, of this property, uh, Project AX 071874. All right, we have a motion. Is there a second? 
And I'll second it. All right, I have a motion by Member Wunderlich. I have a uh, second by Member Mellon. Is there, uh, let's uh, everybody vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. Okay, and now we need a motion for the rezoning. I'm gonna mess it all up, but I'll make a motion that um, to rezone the Innovative Montessori School Project AX071874. Um, RZ, or no, that was the RZ180711. And you're doing that from an Orange County A1 rural to Orange County to Coe A1 agriculture. Correct. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there a second? A second. All right. We have a motion by Member Mellon. We have a second by Vice Chair Williams. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Carries unanimous. All right. Um, we do have a second item here, the Inspiration Town Center Luxury Homes. Um, and yeah, I'll my, turn it over to yes, Mr. Rubin. Chairman, um, I, first off, I do generally try to only schedule planning and zoning commission if we do have a uh, project of substance. So, for instance, if, if it's an annexation and rezoning of just a, a, a vacant little parcel that's just a quick hearing, I will try not to bring you guys out for just a quick 15-minute meeting. This project is on track. It's, it's not a result of the applicant. I believe Mr. Wunderlich remembers this. It's a town home and, and commercial project uh, down on off McGuire. Um, there is a third party and adjacent property owner that we do have to work to get some right away with. And due to the sensitivity of trying to work with them, I didn't want to press too hard and go too fast. We're still working with the adjacent property owner and we'll bring this back to the next meeting in October. We are continuing it to a date certain. So during this public hearing, we're going to uh, let the public know that we are um, continuing the project to the October meeting. We will resend the 300 foot notice out with the revised dates and uh, bring this back in October with some other projects. So again, I will not try to schedule a fleet planning and zoning for just one simple little annexation. Um, usually try to wait for a, a, a regular project to come. I do have a number of parcels I'm gonna annex that the city owns, just some small stuff, and I group them and let them go on when we have some development projects for you all to discuss. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this still is a public hearing, so we do have to open the public hearing. Um, and, and then continue, we can continue it to that it. date. So uh, at this point, I will open the public hearing, um, and then I will continue the public hearing until October 9th. So at this point, we'll... Uh, well, it's just a continuance of the project. Of the, okay. You're not continuing the yeah. public because there's it's the record's still not being made. Right. So yeah. continue the process. So we'll uh, close the public hearing and then continue on October 9th with the item. All right. Uh, I do need a motion yes. to. Um, and this is without prejudice to the applicant. This is a staff initiated continuance. Thank you. All right. So I, I do need a motion to continue to. Um, Preliminary final subdivision plan until October 9th. So can I get a motion? So Mr. Chair, I move that we continue, that we continue the discussion and public hearing for Inspiration Town Center and Luxury Homes. I'm looking for a number. Is there a number assigned to this one? Um, I don't think it was okay. given to us. I, um, for the date? Of October 9th. Of October 9th. I have a motion. Can I get a second? I second that motion. All right. I have a motion by Vice Chair Williams. I have a second by Member Bernstein. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries? All right. So we will look at that at our next meeting. And then we have one more piece of business. We have a CRA presentation. Uh, and the city staff will now provide us with an introduction and overview. And Virginia, I'm assuming. Well, I'd like to introduce uh, Virginia Corliss. She is the CRA Administrator, Deputy Director of the Development Services Department. She comes our way via uh, consulting firm, Kendall Oliver was the last one. Ginger has, you're seeing Ginger's plans. She's not only a city resident, but uh, the, the, the establishment of the CRA was a result of Ginger. Ginger sat on the CRA board as a citizen member. Uh, Ginger
planned the West Orange Trail. She planned the original downtown master plan, which is a really neat plan that didn't that sat on the shelf. Many of the elements are in today's newer adopted plan. So I'd like to introduce uh, you guys, Ginger, and I, I want to thank her for coming to provide some meat to this meeting and just. Uh, Commissioner Keller is fully aware of the Community Redevelopment Agency, what it does, what it means. And as we bring projects forward that will have public hearings that are located in the CRA, when we emphasize either the reason why this is good for the CRA, or hopefully we'll get there the reason why it's bad and we're not recommending approval, you'll have a better understanding of what we're talking about. And you'll see some stuff, she'll update you, and you might recognize some of the stuff she's talking about. So with that, thanks. So I move over here to staff. very noisy and squeaky, so. <laughs> Chairman Keller and Commission, I am honored to be here, especially now as an official staff men member for the city of Iquowi. I actually started August 1st of this year, um, but as Director Rimmer said, as Mike Rimmer said, that basically I've been involved with the city of Iquowi for over 20 years, in fact, over 30 years in the planning credentials. I started my career with Orange County Parks and Recreation Department in charge of planning and development hence the West Orange Trail, literally finding it from the railroad tracks and continuing to work with that with the different commissioners, especially Commissioner Chapin at that time with that. I also then went on to, for a very long career, over 25 years, as having my own firm of, of Herbert Hallback or HHI Design and then joining Tyndall Oliver, specializing in community redevelopment, parks and recreation, and neighborhood planning. And so when I come to here, I, you know, I'm kind of, in that twilight of my career, so to speak, I'm very honored to actually, I started in the public sector and I'm really fortunate to land in my hometown to finish out my professional career in the public sector from my hometown of the city of Ocoee. Now, when we talk about the community redevelopment plan, I did not come with a huge presentation tonight because I hope to be before you. Uh, but I wanna give you a little bit of insight and provide you some information. Back in 2004, I actually did the finding of necessity or finding of life for the city in which we identified an area that basically goes today from the 429 to Clark Road. In fact, if you go to, I believe, page four of your little handout, which is our 2017 and a report actually has a kind of component of the CRA, but it's 1,070 acres that goes from the west from 429 east to Clark Road, north to basically kind of the Story Geneva connection to the north south to the Turnpike and Old Winter Garden Road uh, in containing about 1,070 acres. So in 2004, we did the, the blight finding. We, we worked with the, the commission and the public at that time, and including Orange County, until 2006 when the CRA was actually established in the community redevelopment district that we call 50 West Redevelopment District today was formed. Being Orange County is a charter county, we actually had to seek delegation from Orange County through an interlo interlocal agreement that specifies that we have what's called a 30-year window for redevelopment. However, state statutes at that time allows an agency to go to 40 years. So we still have some, some opportunity, hence 2006, to go to basically not just 2036, but an additional 10 years to go by that. But it had to be done in concert with Orange County at that time. So basically we create a 30-year window from the standpoint of developing a community redevelopment plan. And the community redevelopment plan really sets out that infrastructure, the public infrastructure from roadways, streetscapes, and parks that the city can undertake, as well as the economic development for partnerships between the city, between private development, and other governmental entities to really take a look and revitalize 50 West Community Redevelopment District. In 2010, I've actually provided you an insert to what was accomplished with a lot of public involvement and a lot of input from the city commission, from the residents, as well as from economic development professionals, is actually developing what was called the CRA's target, basically it's target area special development plan. It goes very long, almost as long as my new title with that. <laughs> but within that, in the special target areas, we were actually developed or actually established three target areas within the community redevelopment district. Target Area 1, which is basically south of 50 McGuire, 2, where the city centers will be going, working through the completion, 
where the oasis is now, basically going across to Lake Bennett, and then the third target area, basically in the vicinity of Health Central. And if what I provide you in the insert are basically development standards or parameters, and we look for development to come in to say, here's at least the framework that we're wanting to be able to achieve to get that, the development form we're trying to see. And that is that more urban form, a form that's looking to provide economic development opportunities to actually increase the density and intensity within this area, hence the opportunity to bring more to the city of, Kissimmee, the city of, uh, of Ocoa as a whole. Whoa, I haven't been to Kissimmee in ages, so that was way back with that. For those that may not know, the, the basically a CRA gets its source of funding through tax increment financing or TIF. And that basically is the increment as your property values go up, the value and the property values, that increment stays within the district, both the city and the county's increment goes to fund projects within the community development district. It's been really exciting to see that since 2006 to this year, there's over an 88% increase in property values. Just from last year alone, we've had an 83% in increase in just the increment received from the city and county. And now have over a $2 million budget to be able to work with. Of course, part of that budget is from the settlement from the Colony Plaza and McGuire property to in, in Target Area 1, but still to have that revenue to come in for us, we now have opportunity to do a lot of projects. And in fact, the last piece I gave you was a list of projects. These are public projects that we are undertaking within the Community Redevelopment District and programs that we're initiating. Because you can see, we've hit the road running this year. And so hopefully you'll be hearing a lot. Have you had the opportunity to see the new landscape medians on Old Winter Garden Road? Mm -hmm. If you haven't, I'll just all of you have. That's great because we've been getting a lot of good press from the standpoint of the community surrounding it. We'll be doing a refresh to South Blackwood as well as continuing Old Winter Garden Road to Hempel over next fiscal year. We're also gonna be looking corridor plans for South Blueford for where we're ending up the north and basically that downtown area, how do we continue through? And looking how we're gonna look at connectivity, bike, ped, vehicular, how we're looking at aesthetics within that corridor and looking at Wellness Park, which is located in Stormwater Pond. We also are very proud to say that we got a $775,000 grant from FDOT to enhance the medians of State Road 50 from 429 to Good Homes Road. Now, one of the things I think is very important to note, the maximum amount that DOT usually gives to any one agency for one single project is 500,000. Because of the significance of State Road 50 and the partnership of working with the city we did receive 775,000, but that's to go over two fiscal years. So they kind of looked at how can we bend that and make it work so we're able to start getting that enhancement of the landscape. We'll also be lighting the State Road 50 corridor, again, to kind of taking where the Good Homes Road has started the lighting and continue that roadway lighting, the LED, all the way to the 429. And it's under design now by Duke Energy, and so we hope to be starting that next fiscal year as well. Do not have a time frame for starting. So I can sit here and talk, and, and, and Commissioner Keller knows I am passionate about redevelopment, mm -hmm. as well as parks and other things. But I can talk about redevelopment all day long. But one of the things I think is very important for you, as a Planning and Zoning Commission, as we bring projects to you from the CRA, is that you kind of understand the background to how, and we're going to, not just where we've been, but where we're trying to go and we'll probably be providing those insights as we go forward as well. And excuse me, because I've had a horrible allergy reaction, a lot better than I did a CRA meeting a couple weeks ago when I couldn't even talk. So with that, I'd like to ask you any questions that you may have for me. You mentioned a grant to uh, upgrade the landscaping and the medians between 150, between 429 and, I missed what the other one was. Good Homes Road, Good Homes. city limits, basically Good. from nice that. long stretch, thank you. Mm -hmm. About three miles. Well, meetings are, are easy for us to be able to tackle for a lot of different reasons. Um, making sure that we have an appropriate area and, and they make the biggest bang for the buck, so to speak, when you're looking for that visual aesthetics. 
So besides looking at the landscape in the meetings, there are areas that we can look at right-of-way improvements. Uh, we are starting design, or actually have a 30% design set for North Blackwood. Now, North Blackwood would not just be the meetings. In fact, if you look out there, there's not really any meetings there. We're actually going to be going in North Blackwood, that being from 50 North to where it's going to tie into Maine on the city center, is to do a little bit of the road diet on the lanes that allows us to actually build in new medians. And then we're actually going to be looking how we can actually kind of improve the pedestrian environment for sidewalks and slow traffic down. And there you can start seeing a little bit higher scale even than you're seeing on Old Winter Garden Road. So with that, also the park, Wellness Park, which is located on South Bluford. We're gonna be starting design on that this coming fiscal year. And that is looking to be a wellness park, which will be infrastructure improvements, about a half mile loop around the lake. And we're actually gonna be incorporating some of the, the landscaping and the pond area around the police station. And, then, and actually have exercise stations around that area. And we can bring that to you in a later date when we get further along. So we have a lot of different ideas besides just landscaping mediums. The other areas that we're gonna be working in from an economic development standpoint, we're developing a grant and incentive program where we're looking to not just have facade grants or landscape grants, perhaps tenant build out grants. So we're having a variety of grants that are gonna be work through and we're going to be bringing to the community development agency in November. And so starting having those economic programs as well. You mentioned slowing the traffic down. Are you referring to the 50 or all, all of the, all of the <clears throat> State Road 50 is a state road. When it comes to slowing traffic down, they have a mission where they have to keep people moving. When I'm talking about slowing traffic down or a, a road diet, it's going to be on our roads coming off of State Road 50 to take a, kind of take a moment to slow down. We don't want to stop traffic, so we're going to do it in different ways by just having people conscious of where they're at from the standpoint of their stopping and kind of slowing down from State Road 50 into North Blackwood and that type of component too and when we get off the side roads. It's essentially an on-ramps. Very good, thank you. Basically. Any other questions? My question is, I know that the main focus of the CRA is, um, is economic development, but I'm looking, I'm trying to scan really quickly to see if there is any opportunity for the residential areas, because there are some residential areas right. within this, to benefit as well, and, and if that's in the plan for, um, for the residential areas to be enhanced or if that's really going to happen mostly by private development and, um, and individual parcel development? Or, or is that part of the CRA strategy at all? Well, from a residential, we've actually gained residential units since the formation of, in fact, the past few years and when we had in our original database when we started the community redevelopment district and agency for that area. So residential units are very important. So when we try to look at how can we improve those areas, we have very few residential neighborhoods that are parked actually within the parameter of the boundary. We are adding them, especially such as the Oasis has now brought mm -hmm. in. So now we have to take a look, how are we getting people to, to move around from not, not just getting in their car and going, how are we gonna provide safe, accessible sidewalks, bikeways, where are people going to recreate we also have some other apartments and other residential units that aren't at that scale of the Oasis that uh, we're going to provide public improvements to them from the standpoint of access to a Coe Wellness Park, which would be a public facility. How uh, we're going to look at new lanes of travel from trails and bike paths. So yes, we are taking a look at that. When it comes to, to other CRAs, others that have a higher number of residential areas can actually have grants for those, especially from the lighting, safety, security, aesthetics, enhancement. So those are the things we can take a look at, but the foremost as relates to the area of intention for this area has been put on that commercial development and redevelopment of the area from economic development component. Okay, I was, I was just curious, and if I may just make a statement, um, this is the first time I've seen you, but I've seen your name so much because I'm, I'm a planner by trade as well, seeing your name so many times, I think the city is very fortunate to have you on the staff. So I just 
I'm very happy to finally see your face and put the name together. And well, I've been around a lot, the, and thank you very much. Yeah. And like I say, I normally, I'm talking better than I did two weeks ago, but it's still coming back. Yeah. But that's so thank you. Any additional questions for Ruth? All right, Ginger, thank you very much. I really do appreciate your time this evening. I yeah. do, I'd like to finish by saying my card yep. is on the back of okay. this document here. Mm -hmm. and we're located on the first floor and you're starting to see the 50 West branding coming into more play. You'll be seeing that as we kind of move forward with our improvements, not just within the city hall itself, but also out there in the landscape. So thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, next item is miscellaneous, and uh, we'll turn it over to City Planner Rumor to give us project status report. Yes, the uh, construction boon is still still going on. Uh, record number of building permits for the fiscal year, um, or even if you go calendar year 2018 up through September. We have a number of projects that we had pre-construction meetings on the Lady bird daycare uh, which is located up in the northern area of the town uh, we had the pre-construction meeting today that's located on the south side of West Road we will be having a we had a pre-construction meeting for a the old FX building on Lakewood was bought um, FX scenery building and they're doing some additions and some enhancement to beautify uh, that project um, as well the City is finalizing with uh, City Furniture their permit of 180,000 square foot. It'll be a, a, a build out and, and all of that in record time. We'll try to get some nice press from City Furniture to show people we, we do try to um, not only be a government that's a regulatory agency, but we kind of want to consider ourselves one of the consultants on the team and help you get a project through when, it, when it's been approved. Uh, the, the subdivision process, Arden Park is going to, Arden Park North is going to submit uh, three subdivision plans for phase four, five, four A, for phase four A, five, four A and B and five, or four, five and six, I forget. And so we will be bringing those subdivision plans to you for approval. They will not construct all the phases at once. And with that will be a, the, final leg of Clark Road extension, they have to, by development agreement, design and engineer and construct uh, the remainder of Clark Road. So that is promising. And that's good. They just want to get all their entitlements out of the way. And that'll finalize the, the lots. Now, one bit, there's a, there's a parcel that was intended to be able to be bought by the school board. And we've heard preliminarily from the school board they don't intend to purchase that. Uh, Arden Park will have to then come back and amend the plan if they want to add residential units to that property. So uh, with that, you can see the downtown plan is going forward. They had the <coughs> opening of the, uh, the three selected firms that are designing City Hall. So those will be reviewed and the committee will vote on who they think is the, the most qualified or provides the best package. Uh, we continue with downtown planning. The, the park plan's coming along. There's, Blueford will be ready, uh, will be opened at least for the concrete and curbing and sidewalk. Maybe not the, the, the street lights and the trees by Founders Day, but it will be open before Founders Day. Some park improvements are being done electrical wise to get, to get ready for Founders Day. Then right after Founders Day, the park will really begin. Um, its work. You can see the Lakeshore Center is still being improved and we're going to be uh, opening, uh, doing a kickoff meeting with the consultant to design the downtown park 
pond, pond park. It's a park first that functions as a pond. A lot going on in a short amount of time, so. Additional Keep questions for planner. Just yeah. out of curiosity, maybe, and maybe we can address this when this when the plans are submitted. But what happens when the school board says they're not going to purchase property, and the developer has depended on that to meet the? In this board. case, that that was not. That was not a condition of the approval to the oh, school. Okay. Yes, like, like sort of the preserve the Crown Point property located along Lake Apopka was. This was just a, <coughs> a thought of this would be a good location for a school. Oh, so, okay. so, good okay, question. Okay. So yeah, they did not receive any um, request for it. Uh, well, any uh, credits, credits you know, yeah. any um, impact fee credits mm. for the land or anything like that. So. Okay. Um, but we did, Commissioner Keller always reminded us we have projects, we need eight-foot sidewalks, we need wide sidewalks leading up to that future school. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. uh, that, that, and, um, that and going to the parks and, and, the, and the trail, because that just, just makes it easier for parents to actually get to the trail with their kids. Um, I did have one question. When they uh, complete Clark Road, is that going to be four lane or two lane up that way? It's going to be, it's going to pair down to two lanes. That's where the receiving end on McCormick is right. two lanes. So it'll, it right in the curve, just past Oak Trail Reserve, it's going to go down to two lanes. Okay. Yes. Um, and, and just a, a side note on Clark Road. Are we, um, are we looking at possibly putting a traffic light at Hackney Prairie right now? Um, just did, uh, tonight when I was going to come out, I was going to come out through Prairie Lake and you cannot make a left-hand turn out of Prairie Lake at six o'clock. Uh, basically, the traffic is, the traffic going north is backed up past the entrance. So you can't even see to make a left-hand turn out of there if there's any traffic yes. coming at you. So it seems, Obviously, Prairie Lake's not the place with Hackney Prairie having the school, so I'm just curious if um, we're looking yet at putting a traffic light there. Yes, how we're looking is we've actually got a consultant that's looking at all at two things. That the neat, sort of not doing the warn analysis yet, but they're looking at that intersection, but they're also looking at all the signals from um, the mall. I don't believe it's 50. It's from the mall all the way up to Clark Road. It's a signal analysis to make sure those signals are timed and how all that works and how that'll play into that intersection at Hackney Prairie. Yeah, because it's, so, uh, it's getting ugly over there. Yeah, sort of our first two priorities is Fuller's Crossroad and Okoe Popka Road, the left turn lane, which we, the, I believe the agreement was, a, it was approved by the City Commission with Orange County. It was on the Orange County agenda. And second is a, is a um, Traffic light at Ingram in Clare Cone Okay. Now Clark Road will have an impact. We'll reduce some of those trips going down there. So, but involved with this signal timing on Clark Road is looking at Hackney Prairie for a signal. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Because yeah, if, if how it will how it will operate, then from there we'll look at doing a signal warrant analysis and seeing if any of the eight criteria are met. It would be nice, I know we're still waiting for the properties to develop on the west side of that road before we can actually four lane that. But that would be nice if yes. we can actually ever mm -hmm. get that to a four lane because that would definitely mm -hmm. improve yes. the traffic flow over there. Uh, any other questions? Here and then, uh, don't want to fail to forget, uh, this will be Duane's last planning and zoning meeting with you all. Duane has accepted a position at the city of Groveland as a planner. In, in, the, in the town he lives, he's, he's got a great deal over there. We're going to miss him. I mean, as a new little boy, we're looking forward to see him grow up, but we'll still keep in touch. He's, he's everyone's friend at City Hall, so we look, wish him good luck in his new endeavors. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right. Additional comments? All right. Hearing none, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. We got a motion. Is there a second? I second that. 
All right, I have a motion by, member, uh, by uh, Vice Chair Williams and second by Member Mellon. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, carried. All right, thank you very much. We'll see you all in October, October 9th. Yes. Yes. Yes.